Punctuality. I expect that. I know I'm not an easy man to find. Pretty soon, you'll be impossible to find. <coughs> yes, yes, good, good. This is the right amount. <laughs> I'm sure you can understand that I don't like to bill insurance companies. <laughs> Again? Come on, come on. Well, come on. Don't worry, I washed them earlier. normal.
You know, this ain't no damn hotel I'm running here. It was never a part of our deal for you to stay here until you're completely healed. I mean, this ain't no damn room service and... Take a look. What are these, Father? Oh, uh, right over there, Mr. Thompson. I don't know how I got tricked into this. Come on, Keith. Playing the Easter Bunny is good for the soul. <laughs> Sweating to death, good for the soul, too. <laughs> uh, what are you complaining about? I gave you the day off so you could do this. You're supposed to be busting your butt for me, remember? I only hope they aren't disappointed. Now, relax, Keith. Nobody's going to be disappointed. I want to see you at 7 in the morning. We got a dozen palm trees to plant at the bank tomorrow. I'll be there. And sober, too. Mr. Thompson, I told you I do not drink. Yeah, yeah. Father, if you don't mind, can I get you John Hancock right there? Thank you for lending Keith to us for the day. Give him hell, Keithy. Sorry, Father. He means well, I think. There we go. Now comes the easy part. You just hop from kid to kid and pass out the candy. 
I hop too? All right, never mind. Hopping is optional. Come on, Flops. Let's go. Slugger, happy Easter. <laughs> Say thank you, Andy. Thanks. Happy Easter. Your ear is bent. Andy. I'm afraid he's right. <laughs> well, may I help you with that? <laughs> On behalf of all the Easter bunnies in the world, I thank you. I'm Keith Graham, and I'm afraid it's a lost cause. <laughs> I'm Christine Davis, and I think you look adorable. run it tonight and see what copy detective says. Fine. Remember, the loser buys the winner. I double dip at Frosty's. <laughs> Go on, ask him. What? <laughs> How can I just walk over there? Try one foot in front of the other. Uh, Christine Davis, when was the last time that someone nice and attractive and of the male persuasion showed up in this town? About three months ago when Mark moved into this town, and we all know what a great big flop that was. I don't exactly have a great track record when it comes to men. But that's over. You better strike while the hormones are hot. Oh, <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Listen, I saw the way you two were looking at each other this afternoon. We didn't look at each other anyway. I... Do you think he's married? Well, I think you'd better find out. And if he's not, remember, Robert's is supposed to be very fertile. <laughs> <laughs> Is Easter Bunny allowed to dance? <laughs> well, usually not when he's on duty, but uh, in this case, it'd be on. Hey, look at that. The bunny hop. <laughs> Deerview's a nice town. Everybody's been very friendly. It's very peaceful. Andy and I are very happy here. So it's just you and your son? Uh-huh. For over two years now. So, how about you? You married? Oh, no, not yet. Some... Mind if I cut in here? No. Sorry I'm late. Hello, Mark. Come on, Christine. I said I was sorry. I had to work late. You know I'm doing this for you and Andy. Come on, Christine. I'm 
really trying. I need you to give me another chance. A chance for us to be together, to be a family. Mom, I thought we were just having dinner. We are just having dinner. Now, don't you start teasing me. How do I look? Great, Mom. Just look great. The pot roast. I forgot to season the pot roast. You seasoned it ten times already. Wait me longer. He's gonna go away. Andy, don't be so helpful. Hi. You found us. I sure did. It's the prettiest house on the block. <laughs> I thought you said before you sold real estate. Boy, he's got a mind like a steel trap. Well, I did that too, and I was pretty good at it. Now, where was this? In Charleston. Oh. Is that in South Carolina? That's right. Anyway, I needed a break from the rat race, mm -hmm. and I've always enjoyed working with my hands, you know, building and growing and... Mr. Thompson was kind enough to give me a job where I also get plenty of fresh air and sunshine, so I'm really happy here. Deerview is a wonderful place. I feel like cemeteries. Andy. Well? Well, what? Well, this place is so dull. I mean, when I grow up, I'm going to move to, like, Chicago or New York or... Andy, Andy, the people in big cities are not nearly as nice as they are here. Like you folks, inviting me to a home-cooked meal. Well... I suppose we've never had a bunny rabbit for dinner before. <laughs> <laughs> now, I used to I used to do these when I was a kid. Did you ever put one of them together, Andy? Well, I'm not into models much. Computer sleuthing? It's my specialty. Well, what do you mean? Like uh, Sherlock Holmes or Agatha Christie? Well, kind of. I have a program that gives you different clues. You have to figure out who the murderer is, how they did it, and what the motive was. Sounds fascinating. Maybe you can show me how it works sometime. Sure. I'm not intruding, no. but uh, I just wanted to thank you for a great dinner and a wonderful evening. Well, we enjoyed having you. And we just got these in. I thought you might like them. Thank you. Well, that Andy's quite a boy, sharp as a tack. Well, sometimes he can be a little too smart. Miss Davis! Just a minute, Tiffany. Miss Davis, please! I'll be right with you, Tiffany. Miss Davis, but I gotta pee right now! Oh, thank you for telling me that, Tiffany. Well, guess I better go. My public's calling. Mm -hmm. I can see you have your hands full. Anyway, thanks again. Oh, sure. Hey, do you like picnics? Sure do. Uh, Sunday's my day off. Great. I'll see you at noon. I look forward to it. to talk. Mark, now is not a good time. Tiffany has you just... You had time to talk to that gardener. He is not a gardener. And besides, we don't have anything to talk about. I think we do. Shh. We have been seeing each other for the last three months, and now you start dating someone else? Mark, we broke up two weeks ago. It wasn't working. Well, it was working for me. I thought we had a future together. I tried hard to be a good stepfather to Andy. Well, you tried too hard. Mark, we've been through all this before. It just didn't work out for me and Andy. 
We could be the perfect family. Mark, please, just let go. Christine! Don't. I love you. It's over. Well, he's happier than I've seen him in a long time. He's a terrific kid. That model's not much of a challenge for him. He's almost done with it. <laughs> and I'm happier than I've been in a long time. Well, you deserve to be. How did Andy end up in a wheelchair? Well, when Andy's father and I got divorced a couple of years ago, Steve had Andy every other weekend. And one weekend when he came to pick up Andy, we got into an argument over... You know, God knows what, and Andy got upset, started to cry, and he ran out of the house and into the street. Never saw a car. I'm so sorry. It's a lot to handle. I mean, it's really overwhelming for him. Well, he sure does seem to handle his handicap well. Yes, he does. You know, but that isn't the whole story. You know, he was in the hospital for many months of therapy. At least a dozen doctors examined him. Keith, they all said the same thing, that he should be able to walk, that physically he can. But they, they don't know. They think it's psychosomatic or something. Then we can never give up hope that he'll recover someday soon. Maybe I can help. We had a wonderful time. Andy, did you thank Keith for a great day? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great day, too, Slugger. Let's do it again real soon. <laughs> I think I can guarantee it. Bye. Bye. startle you that's all right i didn't see you <laughs> can i help you maybe i'm mark Grinnell. we met at the easter dance remember i live around here and you're new in town aren't you yes i am i'm keith grant will you excuse me So what can I do for you? I just thought since we're going to be neighbors, we ought to be acquainted. Nice place you got here. A lot of fresh air. Never gets too hot. Plenty of privacy. I like it. Did you buy or are you renting? Mark, you're not here to discuss real estate, are you? No, I guess not. Look, pal, I think it's time you and I had a man-to-man -man talk about a certain lady by the name of Christine. What about her? I think you should know that I've been seeing her for the last three months. And I'm also very fond of her son, Andy. We're going to be married. We're going to be a family. I'm going to be Andy's stepfather. Well, she never mentioned any of this to me. Is she aware of all your plans? Look, pal, I don't think that's any concern of yours. You just stay the hell away from Christine and Andy. Find your own family. Well, Mark, I understand. After all, you were there first, weren't you? Yeah. Glad you see it my way. Well, look, pal, no, no hard feelings, huh? No offense? None taken. <laughs> Not your pal.
Lord has told us that the greatest of all our human virtues is love. The love that exists between a man and a woman. The love of a mother for her child. And there is no greater joy in the eyes of the Lord than the family unit. It is a gift given to us by the Almighty and it must be preserved. Hi. Well, handy boy. Who was our culprit, huh? Was it the murderous butler, or the nasty chauffeur, or was it the gardener, huh? Well, I haven't spent much time at my computer lately. Why is that? I'm anxious to find out who the murderer is. We spend a lot of time with Keith. Well, you don't sound too happy about that. No, well, Mom likes him. How about you? How do you feel? Well, he means well, and there's just something that bugs me about him. I mean, he's a real cornball, real square. Well, your mom seems to really like him, and that's important. Seems like a nice enough fella. Yeah, I know, but he just tries too hard. He's a real nerd. Why don't you give him another chance? He might surprise you. Now, back to our case. Was it poison? Or strangulation. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for bed, slugger. I'm not finished yet. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, I came to tuck you in. Where's Mom? Up we go. Hey, what are you doing? Put me down. There you go. Did you brush your teeth yet? I can do it. Don't fight me, Andy. I'm here to help you. You should get used to it. I can do it, you know. I know. You're a big boy. Did you brush your teeth yet? Yes, I did. Good boy. Good boy. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. printing paper is. It's right under your desk where it always is, honey. Let me help you, Tiger. No, he can do it himself, Keith. All right, Sherlock, it's lights out for you right now. Good night, Andy. I don't know what's gotten into him. Well, he's just not used to having a man around the house. All he needs is time, Christine. Oh, I hope you're right. You know, I worry about him so much. You know, just last month, I found him trying to use his computer to access local police records on an unsolved murder case for the last 20 years. Can you believe it? My son, the hacker. Well, you got to be pretty smart to be a hacker. He's a good boy, Christine. I wish you could stay with me tonight. I want to. I really want to. But I can't do that. Why not? 
Because I'm not the kind of guy to come into town and just take advantage of a single mother. I'm just not that way. Oh, but I want to make love to you. Not until it's right. Not until we're a family. Keith Grant, did you just ask me to marry you? If I hear the right answer. You are the most incredible man I have ever known. Is that a yes? Will you marry me? And you, Christine and Davis, accept Keith Grant to be your husband, to love him and honor him, holding him above all others in sickness and in health. Until death do you part? I do. Please take the marriage ring. Place it on Christine's finger and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And now, by the power granted unto me, by God and the state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Keith Grant. Brennan, that was a beautiful ceremony. Thank you. Well, thank you. You know, it's always a pleasure seeing two people so happy together. It's too bad your relatives and your friends couldn't make it. Yeah, well, Louisville's a long way away and uh, such short notice. Mm. I thought you said you were from Charleston. No, I grew up in Louisville. In fact, my family still lives there. I spent the last few years in Charleston, just before I moved here. I have a very good friend in Charleston. I went to seminary with him. Father Driscoll, do you know him? Uh, no, I don't. Will you excuse me, Father? Christine sent me up here for some champagne. I'm not about to keep her waiting. <laughs> At least not on our wedding day. <laughs> of course. We have plenty of time to talk later. I told Mom she should have waited. She hardly knows anything about him. You know, Andy, I suggest that you keep your suspicions and your investigations to your computer games. Hmm? about time to hit the hay? 
Brought you some hot milk. Isn't that what a babysitter's supposed to do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what are you doing? I want to find out about him. Andy, you're taking this too far. You can't do this. You can't pry into Keith's life. Look, he tells you one thing and he tells us another. It's not fair to Keith, and it's not fair to your mother. Now, what do you think you're going to find out? I want to find out who my stepfather really is. for me? No, I'll do no such thing, young man. Your imagination is getting out of hand. Now, you're going to bed right now. Come on, Father. No. I can't make these long-distance phone calls. Hmm. My mom will kill me. Besides, he's going to talk seriously to a kid. You've got to help me. No, absolutely not. This nonsense stops right here and now. I'm less than 10 phone calls. We can find out if he is from Charleston or Louisville. Or if he's lying to us for some reason. Come on, Father, you've just got to help me. Well, I won't make any promises. But if you go to sleep right now, I'll think about it. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Good night. Oh, and one last thing. Mm? What now? Did you find any cookies in the kitchen? Oh, I told you not to <laughs> you that. Get to sleep. <laughs> With Lauren Sutliff, on location reporter for Crime Search, USA. Hiya, son. How you doing? Hey, that's my favorite TV show. You shouldn't be watching programs like this. You should be outside playing like other kids. I don't want to go outside. I want to watch TV. Andy, I've been your stepfather for two weeks now. I want to start spending some more time together. Come on. I've got a great game for you. I don't want to play any games. Well, Andy, I've got a surprise for you. What are those scars behind your ears? Oh, it's nothing. Just an accident when I was a kid. Look what I got for you. A genuine pro model. Are you crazy? I can't play football. Sure you can. All you gotta do is try. You ready, Andy? Catch. Ah. Yeah, that's okay, Andy. You can do this. All you have to do is move your arms and your hands, okay? Every little boy can do this. I just can't. No such word. Here it comes. Andy, listen to me. Walk. Just get up off the ground and walk. I can't! Come on, Andy, do it. Your mom will be so proud of you. My arm hurts. Come on, Andy. Come on. That's it. You can do it. I knew you could do it. Now, come on, you walk to me. Andy, get up and walk to me now. I can't, you're crazy. Yes, you can. Now, you get right up. You get up. I can't stop it. Yes, you can. You just don't want to, do you? No, I can't, I can't, I can't! Here, and stop that damn whining. And Beth has two kids right around Andy's age. We just moved into a big house with a huge backyard. It's a great neighborhood with lots of kids. And there's a great school with an advanced program for gifted children. It's perfect for Andy. We would love to have Andy for the summer. He'd be really comfortable. He gets along great with my kids. I appreciate that, Beth. I really do. 
But I want Annie to stay with us. And I'm not so sure. Look, Christine, Andy's mentioned a couple of times that he'd like to go to this advanced computer class at summer school. I know. Well, it starts next week. And he also mentioned he'd like to spend some time with me and my new family. Just on a trial basis. He can come back anytime he wants to. Just give it a chance. A chance for what? Andy's very happy here. This is a family. Look, Keith, I'm sure you're a good man. But a boy needs his father. And I am his father. Just give me a chance to take care of him. To be close to him for a while. Look, Steve, I can't promise you anything. But we'll think it over. I honestly don't see what there is to think over. Andy's very special to us. And we certainly don't want him to leave even for a summer. Just can't break up the family. This is a very happy home. You already have a family. Just talk to Andy. Let him decide. Whatever he wants, that's fine with us. I'll talk to him. And I'll certainly stand by Andy's wishes. But you're going to be disappointed. Andy's home is with us. He wants to be here. I'm sure going to miss you, Mom. You absolutely sure you want to go? Well, I really want to go to that special school, mm -hmm. take the computer course. I really like best kids. What about your dad? Well, he really seems to want to spend some time with me. I'd like that. Well, I, I just want you to be happy, honey. Can I call you any time I want? Oh, of course you can, sweetheart. And we'll come up and see you a lot. I don't see why we're even having this discussion. It sounds like you're encouraging him to go. I can't believe it. Keith, I just want Andy to feel comfortable making up his own mind. Well, what's there to make up your mind about? You like it here, don't you, Slugger? With your mom and me, we go on picnics. I take you go-karting. I know you like that. We build these models together, and well, we're going to go camping and fishing this summer. Do you remember? I don't want to go fishing. We can do other father-son stuff. Andy, we're a team, me and Keith, you. what are Christine, you... Christine! He needs to consider this very carefully. Andy, you're going to be more than four hours away. That's very far. You're not going to be able to see us as often as you think. You're going to get homesick, and you're going to miss us a lot, your mom and me. Keith, that's enough. And what if your daddy doesn't give you the attention that I do? And what if he's careless again, and you get into another accident? What happens to you then? Keith, that's enough! Stop it! What's gotten in me? He's my daddy. He loves me. I want to be with him. This is your home. I am your daddy now. He's my real daddy. I want to be with him. I'm Jennifer Ashley. I called about your cottage in the ad. Oh. Oh, nice to meet you. Please uh, call me Keith. Are you uh, new in town? No, we got here last week. We've been staying at the Deer View Inn while we've been looking for a home. Would you have time to show it to us now? Yeah, sure. Just let me clear it with the boss. It's a fine-looking boy. Oh, well, this is my son, Nicky. 
Say hello to Keith, sweetheart. Hi. Hi, Nikki. Please. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, gonna take my lunch break now and show my cottage to these nice folks. Will you make sure you show it to her real good. You know what I mean, Keithy? I just love it. It's exactly what we're looking for. Fresh air, peace and quiet. And that flower bed is so incredible. You must really have a green thumb. Well, I use a special fertilizer. Why do you want to give up this great place? Well, I just moved into town, but I have five months left on my lease. Now, is it just you and the boy moving in? Yes, just the two of us. My husband passed away last year. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I don't mean to cry. No, it's okay. We can't live in the past. You're quite right. <laughs> Can we live here, Mom? Can we? Please? Can we? The place is yours. Well, ready to go. He'll be fine, I promise. We're gonna take really good care of him. I know you will. You be a good boy, Andy. I'll call you as soon as I get there. You and Keith come visit anytime you want. Yeah, we mean that. Don't be strangers. Thank you. I'll see you in two weeks. Okay, gang. Let's hit the trail. Dallas! I love you, Mom. I'll call you every day. Me too. I love you very much, Andy. Here we go. just talking about putting in some new yard uh, with some flowers in it when Andy, Nikki here, brought out the old uh, pigskin. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Father Brennan of St. Joseph's Church. Hi, Jennifer Ashley. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? This is my son, Nikki. Hi there, young man. Hi, Father. You know, in my younger days, I caught a lot of great passes at Notre Dame. Wow, you played for Notre Dame? I sure did, young man. I'll give you some pointers later on. I just came out to say hello. I heard you were new in the neighborhood, and I want to invite you and your son to Mass on Sunday. Oh, well, we'd love to. Thank you. I do. Would you like a cup of coffee and some freshly baked muffins? That sounds very nice. I, uh, I better get back to work. Mr. Thompson's probably wondering where I am. We'll, uh, we'll talk later about the plants, okay? Uh, you know, I got some great ideas for the landscaping. Ooh. Nice to see you, Father Brennan. Good to see you, Keith. Beep. 
family? No. And the laparoscopy confirmed that you have blockages in both of your fallopian tubes. Now, surgery is possible, but there is no guarantee you'll be able to get pregnant after that. But this is a simple operation, isn't it? Yes, but the percentages aren't in her favor because of the... What does this mean exactly? Can she have a baby or not? In my opinion, it's out of the question. I'm sorry. Look, I, I understand if you'd like to get a second opinion. And there is always an option. Let's go. is the family serial killer so named because he seeks out and marries single mothers with one child and then inexplicably kills them in cold blood Andy come on authorities nationwide were shocked when this man escaped a second time from this seemingly impregnable fortress I'm standing outside the gates of the Puget Sound Institute for the criminally insane where he brutally murdered a hospital administrator Andy, and come on, son, his, son, guard in his first escape second, four years Dad. ago and in this second shocking escape, just nine months ago, he savagely killed three more security guards. Police nationwide have absolutely no clues as to his whereabouts. Here's the most recent photograph of the family serial killer. If you see this man, contact your local authorities immediately. He's considered extremely dangerous. Andy, well, come on. Just a second, Dad. The strange serial killer has a long list of aliases and an even longer list of grieving Don't. families left in his wake, which makes this grisly story even more chilling. This is Lawrence Sutliff, reporting on location for Crime Search USA. Gravy, honey? Oh, no, thanks. Boy, that new case on television? Wow! Really weird. I got started to file. I wonder how the FBI ever got along without you, Andy. <laughs> 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 better slow down. Why? What's the matter? Well, let's just go slow. It's, uh, it's more romantic. Keith Grant, you are the most amazing man. I feel like I could be with you like this forever. you were asleep. Yeah, I had to finish up some work at the nursery. I called. There was no answer. I let it ring. See, we never answer it after we close. I made an appointment with Father Brennan. What for? To talk. 
You know, we've only been married six weeks now, and something's changed between us. I don't see why we have to talk to Father Brennan. It's important to me that you be there, Keith. He wants us to go to confession. house though. I know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. I was driving past your old place last night, coming home from the bar. And guess what I saw? Huh? I don't know. What did you see? Why, I saw my truck parked in her driveway. So I says to myself, self, what's my truck doing parked at the Fox's place late at night? when it's supposed to be in your driveway. Now I'm getting real curious. So I hop out of my car, and I take a look through the window, and I take a real long look, and guess what I saw, Petey? You, rolling around on the floor with her, while your little wife is at home waiting for you, dry humping that sweet young thing. Mr. Lion Two-Timer, Mr. I Believe in the Family, bullshit. No, no, you are completely wrong, Mr. Thompson. It's not what you think. You have no idea how important my family is to me. You're full of crap. Silence is golden, Mr. Thompson. Thompson's nursery. Uh, no, I'm sorry, he's not. Actually, he won't be back for quite a while. He had to go back east on family business. I'm Keith, the new manager. Sure, come on in. I'll be happy to show you what we've got. Bye-bye. Well, business is picking up already. And authorities have finally come up with their first solid lead on the escaped family serial killer. This is an update on the story we reported on last week's show. I'm standing in the actual room in which authorities believe the wanted killer had plastic surgery and then murdered the physician at least nine months ago. The victim has been identified as a discredited plastic surgeon who had been arrested in two other states for operating a medical practice without a license. The police crime lab has positively matched fingerprints found here with those of the escaped family serial killer. I'm speaking with police pathologist Dr. Larson. What type of after effects would you see following plastic surgery? In most cases, there are very subtle scars behind the ears, above the hairline, and in the facial creases. Ordinarily, these scars are visible for a year or more after surgery. Thank you. However, the fact that he most probably had plastic surgery makes his capture all the more difficult. Again, here is the most recent photograph of the family serial killer. If you see this man, contact your local authorities immediately. He's considered extremely dangerous. Hi, Dad. Andy, you're supposed to be sound asleep, son. Reporting live on location. Sorry, I got a new case to work on. of the family serial killer. This is Lauren Sutliff for Crime Search USA. Now will you go to bed? This is an amazing case. Yeah. I 
Hope this kind of stuff doesn't give you nightmares. Now, you think you can wait until morning to catch the bad guys? Dad, we detectives never sleep. <laughs> sure is great having you here, son. You know, all that time we were apart, I really did miss you. I missed you too, Dad. <laughs> Sweet dreams, buddy. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And how long has it been since your last confession, my son? A few months, Father. I have a few things to confess. I didn't report a cash purchase at my job just before my boss left on a long vacation. And what else? I parked my truck twice in a handicapped zone. Is there anything in your personal life that you wish to discuss? No, I'm a happy family man. Tell me where you're from, my son. St. Louis. Have you ever been married before? Of course not. Have you ever been unfaithful to your wife? Absolutely not. I don't understand this line of questioning, Father. I came to confess my sins, not to be interrogated. Um, your, your penance is... One act of contrition of five Our Fathers and five Hail Marys. Go in peace, my son. <laughs> he just loves that plane you got him. This is the happiest day he's had in a very long time. Well, there's many more where that came from. He's a fine boy. Keith. Hmm? Move in with us, me and Nikki. We'd be so happy together. I don't think I could do that, Jennifer. And why not, may I ask? Because I don't think it's right to live with a woman out of wedlock. I'd make a terrific wife. I love you, Keith. Keith? I'm flattered, but uh, I'd need some time to think about it. <sighs> and you would be a terrific father. You and Nikki get along so great. He's a wonderful boy. Then say yes. We'd have to move out of Deerview. Oh, why? We love it here. I need a higher paying job to support you and Nikki. And anyway, I don't like working at that nursery with Mr. Thompson. I want to get back to my old job in real estate. Does that mean yes? Not yet, Jenny. But if we're going to be a family, it's important to have a new beginning. and wanted to be with us. Steve brought him back this afternoon. He's back, Keith. We're a family again. Just like you wanted. It's great. It's going to be great having Nikki home. Nikki? Who's Nikki? Wait a minute. Hold on here. I'm sorry. I was so excited to see him, I forgot what I was thinking. Of course, I know it's Andy. I'm gonna go chop some firewood. We're gonna have some marshmallows tomorrow night. Andy's back. (laughs) 
And in your homeroom, you'll have your own cubby, and that's where all the boys and girls keep their jackets and their lunch boxes. Oh, and see all these drawings here on the wall? Hmm? That's some of the work from our arts and crafts class. Would you like to have one of your drawings on the wall? Yes. And you're a single mother? Yes. And your son's name is Nicholas? Yes. We call him Nicky. Nicky? Yes. Would you excuse me? Of course. School will be great for Nikki. Finally, I'll have some children to play with. There are no kids out where we are. Where did you say you were living? We rented a cute cottage out at the end of Haroldsburg Road. It's just a few miles out of Deerview. I think I know that area. Andy, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever seen. Look. Same weight, same height. They don't look anything like each other. He had plastic surgery. I saw the scars behind his ears. There's a story on TV. Look. They found fingerprints where he killed the plastic surgeon. If we can somehow get Keith's fingerprints. Andy, now you're taking this too far. And it's got to stop right now. Father Brennan, this is why I came home. To protect my mother, if I'm right. Did you check all those Keith Grants in Charleston and Louisville? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did, and uh, and they all still live there. Wow, great. Why didn't you tell me? And later on, he told me that he was from St. Louis. Hmm? So what about that? Well, I suppose if I don't help you with this, you'll probably do it by yourself. That's right. Well, but this is what it takes to prove you're wrong, Andy boy then I'll help. Thanks. You're not welcome. Now, let me see this. 
just go and invite him to dinner? You don't even ask me? I thought you liked Father Brennan. What is the big deal anyway? Well, maybe I had other plans, like taking you and Andy out. Well, you didn't say anything. We can go out tomorrow night if you like. Besides, I didn't invite Father Brennan for dinner. Andy did. They're friends, remember? Do you know a woman named Jennifer Ashley? No. Why do you ask? She enrolled her son at school today. They just moved into town. Never heard of her. That was a great dinner as usual, Christine. You're a five-star cook. Oh, you say that to everyone. <laughs> How else would I get so many free meals? <laughs> Let's see. Hmm? She had to cut the granny bandit, oh. and she tried to hold up the Texas Prairie Bank. Well, I'm afraid most of us don't keep up with things like that, Andy. Father, sure. Thank it you. took him two years to finally catch her. Hmm. Andy, I'll never understand why you're not interested in the same things as other kids. Here, let me help you. So, I heard you have Mrs. Jacobs for math this year. Yeah. She's probably 150 years old. She's never even heard a new calculus text. Check for fingerprints. Well, a lot of your classmates haven't either, Andy. <laughs> Have some pie and ice cream, Father. Oh, I, I may burst. Come on. But how can I resist? <laughs> Thank you. Andy? Thanks. You know, it was great, Christine. I won't need to eat for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Father. Oh, it was a pleasure to have you, Father. Thank you, Keith. See you tomorrow in the rec room. See you, Andy boy. I almost forgot. It's pretty cold out tonight, and I didn't turn the heaters on at the nursery. The plants might freeze. Do you want me to go with you? Well, no, that's all right, honey. Why don't you stay with Andy? I'll be right back.
Hi, honey. I was in the neighborhood and I just decided to come in and say hello. It's nice to see you, Jennifer, but I'm pretty busy. What happened to your hand? Oh, it was nothing. So, what's on your mind? Well, I was just wondering whether you'd given any more thought to moving in with me and Nikki. Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't had much time to think about it. I don't understand, Keith. Is there something you're not telling me? Why are you acting so strange? Maybe we need some time to rethink this whole thing. You know, there are just some complications I need to work out. You know, I don't take marriage lightly. You must understand that. Keith, I am not waiting forever. With you or without you, I want to make a life for Nikki and myself here in Deerview. No, 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 no. I couldn't handle that. Not in the same town. Please. No more pressure. I told you, I need some more time. Well, I'm sorry. But you've just about run out of time. This one looks very nice, don't you think? Oh, ladies. Uh, let me know if you need any help. What you doing? Oh, nothing. Just playing a little video game. Andy, I need you to be as strong as a little boy can be. What's up? We've had some sad news. What? Father Brennan died. He was in a terrible car accident last night. Isn't that terrible? I can't tell you how sorry I am, son. You know, Andy, I've been thinking. You spend far too much time fooling around with this computer. You should be outside, having fun, like other normal boys your age. Let's try to be better friends. I want to spend more time with you, Slugger. Why don't we make a fresh start and just forget the past? What do you say? family. Do you know what today is? Anybody want to guess? It's Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to me. Who among us can unravel the mysterious fabric of life and death? Heavenly Father, we ask you to accept our good friend and shepherd, Ernest Thomas Brennan, into your beloved arms. And now, Andy Davis, who is one of Father Brennan's closest friends, would like to say a few words. I just wanted to say 
Thank you. My friend. For all the times you played with me and made me laugh. You were always there when I needed you. You were like a father to me. I miss you. I love you, Father Brennan. Goodbye. Our Father, who art in heaven, I'm going to take a little walk. This is getting too upset. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Okay. Huh? I'll meet you back at the car. terrible about Father Brennan, isn't it? Oh, it's a great loss. He was very dear to our family. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was wondering if I could talk to you about something. Oh, is it about Nicky? He says he loves school. Oh, no, he's doing just fine. He's a great little boy. Oh, good. Uh... It's a little awkward. Maybe now is not the right time. Well, why don't I invite you to my home? I'm practically a recluse out there, and I'd love the company. Okay. Later on this evening? Oh, well, that would be great. Nikki's got a Cub Scout meeting, so we'd have time to relax a little bit. About 8, 8.30? That'd be perfect. Let me just give you directions. I'm the last house at the end of Haroldsburg Road. I know just where it is. Oh, okay. I'll see you then. All right. Okay. So, who's that woman you were talking with after the service? Oh, well, that was Jennifer Ashley. You know, she enrolled her son, Nicky, at school. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, what did she have to say? She invited me to her house tonight to talk. Christine, I've got to be alone for a while. After that funeral, I've got to get my mind off Father Brennan. I'm going to go to the nursery and do some work. Well, you're going out anyway. But it's Sunday, Keith. I know, but Mr. Thompson might be back next week, and I'm behind on my work. I'll be back to spend time with Andy before you leave. Promise. Andy, go on inside, okay, honey? I'll be right there. Okay. I can postpone my talk with Jennifer until tomorrow, if that's what you want. It's all right. We'll have a late dinner when you get home tonight. All right, I'll just tell her to keep it short. It is a school night anyway. Look, Keith, I know Andy's really upset about Father Brennan's death. Could you talk to him? Don't worry. I'll be sure to spend some time with him tonight. And if you need me, call the nursery. All right, I'll see you later. She had to do it. You can't leave me alone. Do it right. I just want to do it right, but they never let me. Make me do it. strange about Keith. Do we have to talk about this now, honey? Well, is there anything that bothers you about him? I'll let you know in a couple of hours, okay? How come he's never mentioned any family or friends? I don't know, Sherlock. What are you getting at? 
Have you ever asked him about those scars behind his ears? No, I never asked him. Why? Come on, Andy. Out with it. Why? Well, maybe Keith isn't who he says he is. I mean, maybe he's really someone else. Yeah, well, with any luck, maybe he's really Kevin Costner or Tom Cruise. Come on, Mom. I'm serious. I'm really worried about this guy. Okay, Mr. Worry Wart. What is it exactly that you're worried about? I'm worried about him hurting you. Oh, Andy, this is really serious, honey. I know Keith and I are having our problems, okay? But don't you think you're letting your imagination run a little wild here? I met physically. Oh, honey, what is the matter with you? He has never, ever done anything like that to me, ever. Come here. Oh, has he ever hurt you, honey? Has he ever hurt you? No, no, he hasn't. Oh, thank God. Hello? Christine, I'm glad I caught you before you left. Uh, this is Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Would it be okay if we postponed until tomorrow night? Sure. There's no rush, really. Uh, my boyfriend just called. He, he said it was some kind of an emergency. Your boyfriend? Yes, I, I have to go meet him right away. I'm really sorry. That's okay. I understand. We'll talk tomorrow. Thanks. I'll see you then. dark in here. Why are we here at this hour? Hi, honey. I'm glad you're able to make it on such short notice. Oh, you said it was an emergency over the phone. Yes, it is. I have an answer and I need to tell you right away. I don't understand. You mean about us living together? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid the answer is no. You see, I need to protect my family. I can no longer allow you to endanger them. What family? What are you talking about? I have a wonderful family with a beautiful wife and a great little boy. And you have gotten in the way. You son of a bitch. You lying bastard. <laughs> Are you upset with me, Jen? What's your hurry, Jen? You just got here. Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll have everything worked out soon. <laughs>
I'll be right back. Mom, please don't go in there. Andy, I don't want to hear that nonsense again, okay? But I want you to stay put. Pleasant surprise. Oh, God, you scared me. What are you doing here? I thought you were visiting Jennifer. I was on my way there, but I just thought I'd drop by. So, are you alone? Just me and my ficus. Whose car is that outside? I didn't know there was a car outside. Where is she, Keith? That's Jennifer's car outside, and you know it. Christine. I would never do anything to harm our family. You know that. Everything is under control. Believe me. You are my wife, and I love you. So please, go home, and I'll meet you there soon. I asked you, where is she? Things are getting very complicated. Oh, my God. Ah! I told you it was under control, but you wouldn't listen, would you? You wouldn't let me fix things, would you?
didn't know you were here, son. What a pleasant surprise. Don't worry, Andy. I know we can work this out. After all, father knows best. Get out of that chair. Andy, come on! Where are you, Andy? Come on, son, don't be afraid. Andy, where are you? Come to daddy. Found your mother's fort.
Happy Father's Day, slugger. <laughs>